All right, so we're going to continue talking about functions. So the last lesson was that foldable lesson, so it technically was lesson 1.4a. This is going to be 1.4b, and we'll just call it functions. So the first lesson we talked about what made something a function. Today we're going to have some algebraic forms of functions that we're going to evaluate. And then we're also going to find what makes them equal to zero. So our first example, our directions are to let f of x equal 8 minus 2x squared. And we're going to find the following. All right, the first thing that we're going to find is f of negative 4. So when you have a function, you can use the notation f of x or g of x or h of x. And then when you see that f and then in parentheses negative 4, those parentheses do not mean multiplication. They mean that find the value of the function when x equals negative 4. So we will substitute negative 4 in for x. Now in Algebra 2, when you were doing problems like this, you just type that in the calculator, but we're not going to use a graphing calculator. Um, you could still use a non-smart calculator that would just, you could do negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, um, and then you would make sure you follow the order of operations. So next we would multiply negative 2 times 16 is negative 32, and then finally you would subtract. I personally think you would probably do better on that problem if you don't use a calculator at all, if you just do it all in your head. Because those calculators don't know the order of operations and things start getting weird if you just don't type it in exactly right. Okay, the next one's going to be a little different. I'm not sure if you guys did problems like this in Algebra 2 or not, but we're going to find f of x minus 1. So instead of just putting a number in for x, we're going to put an expression in for x, but it works out exactly the same way. So in the place of x, we're going to write x minus 1. So we're substituting x minus 1 in for x. So it disappears. The x disappears and becomes x minus 1. All right, then we still have to follow the order of operations where we would use the take care of the exponents first. So that means we want to square x minus 1. Now, again, I'm going to use my little shortcut that I love so much. I want you guys to use it. If you don't want to use it, you would have to multiply x minus 1 times x minus 1. It will still work out. This is going to take you longer. So the shortcut is we square the first term, multiply the terms together, and multiply by 2, and square the second one. So in this case, we would square x and get x squared. We would multiply x times negative 1, and then multiply that by 2, and then square negative 1, which would be positive 1. All right, then we would distribute the negative 2 and combine like terms. So the only like terms you have are 8 minus 2. Now I would recommend that you write your answer in standard form. So we start with the squared term and then the linear term and then 8 minus 2 is 6. All right, so when you put an expression into a function, you get an expression as your answer. All right, I'm going to have you guys try C on your own, and then I'll give you a second or a few seconds to get ahead of me, and then I'll start doing it. But I really want you all to try it on your own at home. So F of X plus 3.
Okay, so now we are going to do a piecewise function. If I move too fast for you when you're watching the video, you can always pause it and then go back and rewind it. Um, so for example two, we're going to evaluate the function And this function is going to be a piecewise function. Now, it may have been since Algebra 1, since you talked about piecewise functions. So a piecewise function, you use different pieces for certain parts of the domain. So certain values for x, you use different pieces. So this one is going to have two pieces. The first piece is 3x minus 4, comma, and you use that piece when x is less than 0. Right, and then the second piece is 3x plus 1, and we're going to use that piece when x is greater than or equal to 0. So when you're evaluating these piecewise functions, you do not use both pieces, because we can't put a number in for x and get two y's if it's a function. And this is a function because it says f of x. All right, so we're going to find f of negative 2. So the first thing you have to decide is what piece are you going to use. So we have to look at the inequalities. So you have to decide is 2 less than negative 2 or is 2, sorry, is negative 2 less than 0 or is negative 2 greater than or equal to 0. So negative 2 is definitely less than or equal to 0. So we're going to use the first piece because it falls in that part of the domain. So we would put negative 2 in for x in the first piece and get negative 6 minus 4 or negative 10. All right, for B, we're going to find f of 0. I didn't mean to do it equals there. OK, so then we have to decide what piece to use. So we look at our um, inequality. So we have x is less than 0, or x is greater than or equal to. So it's going to fall into this one because of the or equal to bar. So we're going to use the second piece. So we put 0 in for x in the second piece, and we're going to get 1. OK, we're going to do one more. So for C, we're going to find f of 2. So you guys go ahead and decide which piece you think we should use. I'm going to rewrite this just so you can see it a little bit better. Oh, there we go. All right, so you ask yourself, is um, 2 going to be less than zero or greater than or equal to zero. Definitely less than zero. So we're going to use the second piece. So we just put two in for x and we're going to get seven. All right, so that's how you evaluate piecewise functions. You are not, and I repeat, not going to put the number into both pieces when you're evaluating. Only one piece. All right, so for example three, we're going to find the values such that f of x equals zero. All right, and our function is f of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared minus 9x 
plus 36. All right, so if we want to find when this function equals zero, we're going to take it and set it equal to zero. And then this should feel super familiar. This is what we just took a test over, solving equations like this. Um, there's actually one on your test that was very, very similar to this one. Um, so since this one has four terms, we're going to solve it by grouping, by factoring by grouping. All right, so we factor a common factor out of each group. All right, and then what you factored out goes in one set of your parentheses, that's one factor. What was left over is the other factor. And then we find what makes this equal to zero. So x minus four equals zero when x is four. And this one, we would need to solve by adding and then taking the square root. Now, lots and lots of people on their test forgot to do the plus or minus when they took the square root. So don't forget that. There's two numbers you can square and get nine, three and negative three. All right, so there's three values of x that make this function equal to zero. Those are technically called the zeros, but we'll talk about that terminology another day. All right, so for your assignment on page 44 through 45, I want you to do 21 through 23, 26, 32, 36, and then 38 through 44 even.